the June meeting of the Kaikai Hokianga Community Board. Um, we're going to start this morning um, by welcoming three guests um, to our meeting, and we're just going to do a bit of a presentation, a, a ceremony, and some photos, and then we'll get back down to the meeting. Now, these three um, these three youngsters here have been offered a scholarship to go to the Outward Bound course, and um, as we've all heard the Outward Bound course is being paid for by the Community Board here. And so they, they, they've had to go through a selection process and they've they convinced the board um, that this was a good idea. And I think, if I remember my history correctly, um, there were a couple of people up in, all, in the other, in the other um, communities who weren't able to go. Then we had a, a, um, a surplus of fantastic youngsters who could uh, fit the bill. So we've actually paid for more than our fair share, which is, uh, from the community board perspective, a, a great thing. So I'm going to get Mokul uh, Pania here to say a few words, and then we'll get you up here and we'll, we'll shake your hand, give you a certificate and take some photos, and then you can go back and do your do your thing. So, what um, I am our council's representative for the Mayor's Task Force for Jobs, along with Councillor Rachel Smith. And every year we get an opportunity to nominate Rangatahi from our district for the Outward Bound Scholarship, which has a value of $3,600. Uh, but there is also a shortfall to that. That shortfall is $750 and also travel to get there. We know that outward bound happens at the top of the South Island and from the top of the North Island to the top of the South Island is not an easy uh, travel distance to make and that's also further financial uh, costs. So um, what I'm really proud of this community board uh, today is that we agreed to cover all of those extra costs for our rangatahi. Uh, we opened it up across our community boards and the plan was to nominate one rangatahi from each community board. Uh, our community board just so happened to have three amazing applicants that we couldn't choose a single one of them and we opened it up and agreed to be able to, to fund for all three of these uh, rangatahi, um, Tallulah, Sean and Makoto, to head down to Outward Bound. Um, to grow as leaders and then to come back to our wards, to our district, uh, and make our district a better place. So, Tene, to me, thank you so much. Uh, I'm really, really proud of the fact that this is the first time I've This is an ongoing thing for us. So, koia tene to me, tena in Ontawa. He's just applied to be selected, or he's waiting on um, word from the army so for his input in the name. So, in that way. Marco to guest, um, there's a home in um, Matawira in uh, Pangore, the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of the family from the Kanaka. Yeah. Alula Martin Naylor. She's another farmer from the seat of the university. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's currently working in partnership with the Wada Wada and the Forest. Cool. Get together, we'll check it out. Anyone else in the community would want to get We've got a whole community. Yeah. 
through the council and so forth. Um, but we're not, we're not the council, we're here to represent the, and advocate for the community. So um, we get some things, we, we can make decisions on some things, we get a we get a say on a few other things, and generally we, we can put forward um, from our community the things we put in, make important, but bring them to the council's attention. But we don't really get delegated any significant authority to, to change things or, or, or anything like that, especially, especially things that are already in motion. So I notice there's a few people here who, and I'm sure the, the members of the community board were as concerned as you're about to tell you tell us you are. So just to let you know, your 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 words do fall on, fall on fertile ears, even, even though we may not be able to do anything about it. Let's go. <laughs> Yes, you're quite right. It sounds like I'm talking to the converted, but here goes. Um, I am here uh, to stand on behalf of a forum or a collective of Hokiana, Fano, Hapu, and landowners and farmers who met on weekend at Matai Arunui Marae and Pirinaki to actually put forward the submission around posing significant uh, natural areas in Hokiana. Um, there's, a list, there's a list there of all the areas that impact upon us. Uh, and uh, with the exception of many of the people who are in the community board, they actually sent through uh, an email directly to yourself, uh, Mike, as well as uh, Malima and the councillors, because I wasn't aware of the other community board members. So hopefully you'll get a soft copy of this. There are, there are hard copies that are distributed. Um, so just an acknowledgement of thanks uh, to you for allowing me this moment and this opportunity to, to speak on behalf of everybody. Uh, and to hand deliver this uh, letter regarding opposing the SNA. Uh, as I said, on the 29th of May, we met at Wari Marae uh, to discuss the kaupapa, one kaupapa, and that was opposing SNA. Uh, I would like to acknowledge and give thanks to Rangatira, Kaumatua, Fano, who live in Hokianga, Fano, who travelled as far away as Auckland, who came to that hui on Saturday, uh, other Hokianga, Hokianga farmers and Hokianga landowners who arrived from both sides of the Hokianga harbour to that hui to discuss this particular uh, kaitoka korero. Uh, we also had Wai 1040 claimants, so that's Taraki Otakai Whenua um, hearings, that's the Waitangi Tribunal, which of course that, that report isn't out yet. So we're still in the, in the pipeline of actually looking at settlement for Ngāpuhi. So that's where that sits. Um, basically the outcomes that we developed on the day and the solutions that were brought up on the day is what I'm here to present today. Um, it was an unanimously agreed upon inside the funding that I before you and continue to go and canvas this and advocate on behalf of the many people who, were, who met in that group on the day. So the outcomes are, um, just briefly, one is key messages. Kahore kiko nei, FNDC, SNA. Pretty simply, uh, don't bring the SNAs on our blocks of lands. 
The other key thing was I oppose the CNA our Māori lands on docklands. My whānau oppose SNA on Māori lands and docklands. Our future generations oppose SNA on Māori lands and docklands. Te Hikatū Hapu whānau oppose SNA on Māori lands and docklands. And Hokianga oppose SNA on Māori lands and docklands. So if SNA feels like a confiscation of the land. Opposing the second outcome was opposing SNA at FNDC Council regional and central government levels. So the emails didn't just go to you, they also went through to uh, the ministers, uh, including Prime Minister J Jacinda Ardern, as well as NRC, all councillors in NRC, as well as all the other FNDC councillors. So we're quite clear on who we need to target in this particular um, COPA reported all. Uh, all our whānau have been advised, so it's gone worldwide, because thank you social media for being able to get this out really quickly, relatively quickly. So I have um, no doubt over 10,000 submissions are looking at being flooding both yourselves, both NRC, as well as ministers down in central government on this kaupapa. We are also, the other outcome was a hikoi, opposing the SMA. <coughs> so we are looking at standing together and uniting to oppose this, uh, national policy, and it's a proposed national policy statement for Indigenous biodiversity on multiple Māori lands and dock lands. So there is a convergence from Tehiku, from Whangaroa, from Kirikiri, from Taiamai, from Whangarei, from Hokianga, as well as our surrounding areas on both sides of the harbour converging on um, next week here in Kaikohe. So that's our hikoi, Oatukuiho. Uh, and we assert he whakaputanga me te tiriti o waitangi. So this is something that came very loudly, quite clearly from our hui. Um, just our solutions to oppose the SNA. Uh, we note the deadline next, next uh, Friday, the 11th at 11 a.m. for submissions, uh, for completion. And I guess therefore I stand here today to ask FNDC Community Board to advocate to a greater extent on behalf of your constituencies and your people in your respective areas uh, around activating the following solutions. One, as councillors and community board members stop and oppose GCNA and propose national policy statements for Indigenous biodiversity on multiply owned money lands and dock lands. Two, seek development of SNAs with hapu whānau engagement. Our lands are our own by our whānau, not any boards. So perhaps you're talking to the wrong people. Three, request the right to speak to the submission with the council. So that's actually something I'd like to receive a response from here today regarding uh, being able to stand and speak on the day next week uh, when we make that hikoi happen for everybody. Uh, that's me. I'd just like to thank everybody uh, and everybody uh, who's here today who may or may not be aware of uh, how, how much of an impact it will have on Māori. Um, and you don't have to go too far in Hokianga, you leave Kaiko here, you travel along the road, you see the homelessness. It is real. And it is a different a level of equity and equality that exists for Māori and the own Māori lands. We have our dual system actually happening here in our culture, in our country. Um, so I look forward to your response. And yes, I've forwarded all of these letters on to the respective people listed below. Nō reira tātou makumutu e tātou tāku kōrero mō tēnei wā koto. Hei whakamarama mai i tāku tūnga kei mui i a kaitau i tēnei wā. Nō reira tūnga mai i tātou. Yeah. Lene. Yes. Do you have any questions? Yeah, yeah. I'll start. I'll start. Why don't we? We haven't settled yet. So we haven't, okay. had, we haven't even had a conversation yeah, around okay. job plans being handed back. Yeah, okay, cool, thanks. And, and then, of course, you go to... Um... Mr Chairman, Liz, I asked to see Amanda. They were going to get hold of me. I had to make an appointment. I still have heard, not have heard from them. I think it's Still's unacceptable. Done. At least acknowledge. And that's why we just left it. So you're not on your own. Yeah. I agree with you. As I say, I've got an SNA on my property and nowhere I'm, I, I want him to show me where he thinks it is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mark. Right. 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 We, we, we had that very conversation before we started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and all, of all of the things you said, including the ability to change it back. Excellent. Anybody else? Thank you very much, Lenny. You're welcome. Thank you, Lenny. Um, why don't we take a Why don't we go straight on with you, Charmaine? Because you're on the same. Charmaine? Who's Charmaine? Join us. If you want to, if you want to start with USNA, but 
from here to the showgrounds. If they can have a footpath to Pukinui up north, they can have a footpath from here to the showgrounds. <coughs> showgrounds, innovation park, cemetery, golf course, race track. If anything deserves a footpath, that road does. Just a little personal thing. We had a program once for murals of the town. It depicted the the history of the town, where it was, where it came from. I'm not particularly impressed, and I'm not alone, with the graphic designs that are coming up in place of them. Somewhere, somehow, somebody can do something about that before it's too late. And, then, and I do have some sympathy for these people with their SNAs. I had a lady come to me. The rub house swamp at the behind the sawmill is in the back room. Can we ask you questions? Oh, yes. Okay, firstly, um, the, your roadside mine, one, you put in an RFS for that? Yes, I have done. I've been written to the CEO and it's still not done. Okay, so you've had no response, no even response. even a response. Okay, can you talk to me, please, at morning break? Yes. Uh, again, give me the RFS number for that one. Secondly, and, and, and this is just because I've got bad memory, but I, I know you were part of the community board at one stage. Yep. Um, how you, you will have had some input into where the footpaths went? Yes. Okay, so what, what, what movements were made towards your direction of those footpaths you mentioned? There must have been some kind of movement you made when you were part of the community board. Can you, can you just let me know or remind me so that maybe we can move from there? My memory's a little bit hazy on that, Mr. Chairman, but the, I know that road from the Marae Mangikahi Road down to the cemetery needs attention because people returning back from the cemetery, somebody comes out of the ground and hill and all of a sudden a bear road has got a crowd of people in it. That's an accident waiting to happen and I don't want to see it. Okay, thank you. Any more questions for Sean? Mr Chairman, Mangikahi Road is now a national road. That's right. So it would be anything up to 90% funding for a footpath. And that wouldn't have been, wasn't an international road when Sean was here. So that, that, that could be a new application to get that done. Okay. But I do have a conflict of interest because I live there, so. Okay. Well, we, we've got a footpath discussion coming up sometime in this in this meeting, Sean. So um, if the community board feels that it should support your your thoughts, then we'll, we'll certainly ask to raise that question. Okay. Uh, more forms. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Kia ora, Sean. I, I was wondering if you had had the opportunity yet to look at the Kaikohe Township plan that was produced by Waka Kotahi, the New Zealand Transport Agency. Um, it's available on our website. It's a huge file. Would you like to join us? Kirsty Joyner and I am here representing the Rowan Area Residents Association um, to discuss our traffic and pedestrian safety concerns in Rowan Township. In November of last year, I came and spoke to the board, the community board and presented a letter which outlined the history that we had um, had a, quite a number of years of consultation, discussion, work with the traffic engineer. I'm here today to, because I have um, seen that on the agenda today, <coughs> excuse me, there um, is going to be a discussion about funding for footpaths and the company that it's going to happen straight away, but at least it will be well considered. Um, I would like to also state that in, since November, we have had quite a number of community meetings. They have been very well supported by the traffic safety engineer from the Final District Council and the Transport Alliance. We have worked very well with those personnel and very much appreciate their input and they've been helping us. We've continued um, consulting with the community, which as most people who know Rawani will know, it is not an easy resident in the Hokianga area who come to the hospital. So they are all potential users of a safe footpath. So, 
I just would like to support what's in your agenda today. You like to have questions? Yeah. John Busich has a question about the number of people who visit Rawi because lots of people. <laughs> um, I have a question specifically to the book fund, so if you can ask that question as well, it would be great, so I'll ask a few questions. Uh, just on the footpath, I, I do know that um, you have a hospital there and you have eight uh, residents in, in place. Um, how many are using scooters? What sort of traffic is on that footpath? You know, foot, tra foot traffic and how many are using mobility scooters? If any, because I would be really surprised if they can safely navigate with a mobility scooter. Right. It, it is a bit of a catch-22 situation. Who would go out there? in a mobility scooter or such, when actually the footpath just disappears as, you know, if you know the area, it goes so far along, then you're, I expect you're supposed to cross the road to nothing, and then it goes and meets on with another footpath. So anybody going to the hospital who is a mobility scooter on crutches, they wouldn't be doing the safety of their lives. So it's hard to say what the numbers are. I know of at least four people in the town who regularly go up and down or try to. I'd say that, um, a lot more people would if it was safe. Yeah, the new standard is wider, so we hope that it will be wider and safer so they can pass. Just the other question, so to make the chair happy, do you have any idea of the number of registered um, um, attendees of the hospital at all by any chance? Well, it's a wee while since I was um, working in that field, but I recall when the statistics were put together, there were about 9,000 people who um, registered with the hospital as being residents in the full Hokianga area. That's not Kaipohe, but... So that, so that would make Rawani almost as big as Kirikiri? Um, yes, but I mean, yeah, the, okay. there are outlying clinics and the system is very efficient in that respect. Yep. But just to say that there are... Yeah, no, many the, the chair being a bit cheeky. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, no, it means the, 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 um, the argument is Kerry Kerry has 16,500 people because there are 16,500 people registered with their doctors. Oh. And I'm saying, you know, if, if, you, if you claim, if you, if you take that example as a way to calculate the size of Rowley, Rowley is almost as big as Kerry Kerry, so I think we should be... We should be easily able to put some footpaths in Rawani. I oh, definitely. Well, just on that, I have been living in Rawani for over 40 years, and the town itself has grown, um, and it has a lot of through traffic. We have some very happy visitors, but it has also become so busy that it is a little bit of a worry, to be honest. Our children, our school children, um, all of the different recreation areas. Just. Looking at the map of Rawani and looking at the roads you actually have, is there a alternative route to the hospital that could be 